Hello folks, I hope you're all doing well. We are here in the kitchen again on a beautiful day that you might be able to see behind me there. It's red hot outside, the sun is shining. It is wonderful. Well, apart from the fact we haven't had any rain for ages. I can't remember the last time we had some decent rain around here. We must be going back weeks and everything, and I mean everything, is so dry. I'm up with the allotment watering at least every other day because things are so dry. But please keep on top of the watering. There's, that's this, this month's lecture. Please keep on top of the watering. Don't let your little seedlings, your little plants die because they're so dry. I mean, we're not forecast any decent rain here for at least another week. So the watering's just going to keep having to get done, I'm afraid. Anyway, on to some seeds that we're going to be sowing this month. And June's a bit of a mixed bag. Because, like I say, we, we've got all those early crops in there, all the ones that were put out during the spring. Some of them are ready to harvest, some of them aren't, so we've got some space for some new stuff to go out. And we're also going to be thinking about some successional sowing as well. So anyway, on we go. Speaking of successional sowing, first one here is the Kelvinden Wonder Pea. Now, I've already got peas on the go, they're already out there at the plot, they're growing away. And last year, I made a bit of a mistake in that when we harvested all the peas, I had nothing to replace them with. I never realised that I would get that much of a harvest and that would be the plants done and I needed to replace them. So I think probably towards the end of the month we're going to get some more peas on the go. So when we harvest the ones that are now I've got some plants ready to go to replace them to get a second crop a little bit later in the year. Next up are some beans and these are from The Taste of Italy and you will ex have to excuse me let me show you the packet there. I'm going to attempt to pronounce it. These are Fagioli or Fagioli Nani, otherwise known as bush beans. There you go, we'll show them again so you can, you can see what they are instead of listening to my pronunciation. Now with these beans, you can either start them in cells or deep root trainers, or you can sow them direct at this time of year because the soil's warm enough. Like I say, you can see the, the sun blasting out there and we're in Scotland. So the soil's warm enough, sow them direct. There's pros and cons to sow them direct. I'm going to do something about that on a, on a wee video coming up soon. So watch out for that in a couple of weeks time about some of the pros and cons of sowing direct and some of the pros and cons of sowing things in little cells and growing them on. But French beans, if you haven't already done them, still plenty of time to get on and do some. Speaking of a sort of kind of successional sowing, kind of not, this is Autumn King Carrot. And it's in a bit of a funny packet there because that's seed tape in there. So I'm gonna use the seed tape again. So this is a little bit of a later cropping carrot, but I've got another new bed sort of container thing that I'm gonna build at the allotment. If we pop these carrots in now, I reckon about three to four months time, so maybe it's towards the end of September, start of October, we'll get a decent second cup of carrots from them. Oh, that's what I'm planning on anyway, because the new bed, the new container is a really, really tall one, so I think it'd be great for growing carrots. So watch out for that coming as well. Uh, another favourite here, some coal rabi. Normally I grow the green one, but I think for a change, we're going to do the purple ones. So we've already got some green ones out there growing away quite happily. Again, when they're ready to harvest, I'm hoping these ones are just going to be just about ready to pop them in and replace them and again get a bit of a second harvest. Next up, we've got a Swede and this one is called Best of All. There we go, that's that. So I've got a bit of a space in one of my brassica beds. Good time of year to get Swedes on the go. So we'll get some of these. This is your bog standard. Really good, normal taste and kind of sweet, a good good all-rounder. And something just a little bit different there. We've got a purple top Milan turnip. Not to be mistaken for a sweet, this is a turnip. They are sweets. Again, I mentioned I've got a bit of room in a brassica bed and it's the perfect time of year to be getting some of these on the go. Well, as long as we get a bit of rain, it is, because if it gets too, too, too hot, there's a slight risk they might bolt, but I think this should be just about good enough at this time of year. Speaking of sowing things direct, this is squash. Hope you can see there. This is one called Uchikuri, which is a nice summer squash. And again, squash, you can either sow these in cells in little pots or whatever, or you can sow them direct in the ground now because the ground's warm enough. I've got it again. I've got a plan for everything. I've got a bit of a plan for the for the squash this year as well. If you, if you saw the big, the brand new big Vegeva bed that I built in the last video. I think I'm going to put the squash in there and trail the squash all the way around the bed. So I'll, I'll pop a little link in the description down below. You can go and have a look at that and see what I mean about where we're going to put these squash and how they're going to grow. Speaking of successional sowing, we've got some lettuce here and this is Paris Island Cos. Use loads of lettuce, 
all the time, constantly turning it over. Some of the ones I grow are the ones that sort of heart up and you would pick the lettuce in one. Others are ones where you do a sort of pick and come again, where you sort of pick the outside leaves and then the lettuce will just keep growing from the middle there. The cough lettuce, uh, you, could, you could probably do that either, either way to be honest. You can pick and come again and it'll keep growing or you can let it sort of heart up and you can pick it in a one -er. That's one of the beauties of them. Next up, we've got some bolt hardy beetroot. That is probably my pretty favourite, good standard variety of beetroot. It will give you good sized, reddish, deep purple sort of beetroot. And like I say, it's bolt hardy, so it's resistant to bolting, which is great at this time of year when it's so sunny and dry outside. Again, we've got beetroot already on the go, up of the alarm in there, and this will be a successional song sort of thing. So we've got another crop to go in, as space comes available when we take stuff out. Last but not least, it is also a good time of year to grow some kale. And this variety here is Nero de Toscana, one of my favorite ones that I like to grow. And this, this is, it's, kale's pretty hardy. And again, you can treat your kale as a sort of pick and come again. So if you pick those outside leaves off the kale, it'll just keep going and going and going. It should, in theory, unless it gets really, really, really horrendously cold over winter the kale should keep going all the way through the winter. Well, that's me just about done for the day. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing that selection of seeds and maybe saw some of them yourselves. Let me know in the comments down below what your song at this time of year. I always like to see what people are growing at this song at this time of year, because I might just get some ideas of different things to try myself. All the way, I like to do one of these videos every month and I always get loads of comments about what people are doing. And honestly, I read them and a lot of the seeds that you will see me sowing are ones and varieties in particular, different varieties. Are there any varieties of things that you really, really like growing? Like I say, let's just pick one at random here. We've got the purple delicacy kohlrabi. Are there any kohlrabis that you really like growing? I'm loving seeing all the different varieties and trying some of that out. Because after all, isn't that one of the best things about having your own growing space? It's growing all the different varieties that you can't actually get in the supermarket. Anyway, Please, please, please remember to stay on top of your watering. It is very dry out there. I know I said this at the start, but I'm just putting a little reminder in here at the end just to try and get people to keep on top of it because it's so, so dry out there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.